Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, we're in the tent uh, today with a special friend and super entrepreneur, Vivek Wadwa. Uh, I don't even know how many different things I can introduce you as, but uh, you are an innovative entrepreneur, a mentor, you, you, you do a little bit of everything, and uh, now you're up to tackling immigration and obviously singularity. Tell us a little bit about who's Vivek, you know, where have you been, what have you done, and I don't think there's anything you haven't done so uh, <laughs> along the way as an entrepreneur. So welcome to the show, thanks for making time, oh, thanks really, for really appreciate you having, um, making it, so welcome. I'm, I'm a tech guy who happened to uh, get involved with global affairs and uh, public policy and the future of mankind. Uh, don't ask how, I mean, <laughs> sort of... Uh, <laughs> that, that's that's I'm, a big... Uh, I've just been uh, going wherever life takes me and, um, you know, do, trying to do all the good I can. Right. Having fun along the way? Yeah, it's fun, absolutely. Uh, because you, I, I don't know how busy you are, but... You're constantly doing these projects, uh, writing books. Tell me about it. You know, I, and, I, and I wonder <laughs> how you actually manage to do all this stuff. Um, I have a lot of great people helping me great all the people. time. Yeah, I mean, so you know, for example, the research I'm doing, I get the credit for the. I mean, I, I just finished a project on immigration. I get the credit for it, but I had the, the advice of two great academics, two of the greatest academics in their fields, and Anneli Saxian from Berkeley, and Dan Siciliano from Stanford. They're my gurus. They've been guiding this whole thing along. Then I had a team of, of researchers who were just amazing, working day and night, uh, day and night. Nisha Bapat and Sam Huang. I mean, you know, we had a, a team of, of really great uh, uh, women working on, on the research. They worked day and night tirelessly. Briefly tell us what the research actually was, because I actually mm -hmm. heard you talk about the other day at Women 2.0. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. This is one of the things which I've been creating a lot of controversy with. <laughs> is um, immigration. Yeah, of course. And documenting the fact that the United States was the first was for the first time ever becoming a land of emigrants, not immigrants. In other words, people are leaving the United States for the first time ever. Wow. I mean, I, I used to be a tech guy myself. I was a tech entrepreneur. I founded two companies. Yeah. And I knew there were many people like me that um, in the tech in the technology world, you, you know, walk around Silicon Valley. It's like the United Nations. Um, <laughs> totally. you know, even when you see people who look like Americans and you talk, start talking to them, they've got weird accents, right? You can't tell who's a foreigner and who's a local and no one cares over here. No one right? cares, exactly. So um, I had, uh, I, I knew that th th this, this was the case and I started to research it systematically a few years ago. And we, you know, I looked at Annalise Saxion's research and she had documented that in the 80s and early 90s, um, a quarter of the startups in uh, Silicon Valley were founded by Indians and the Chinese. Very interesting. But that was ancient. I wanted to update the research. I wanted to know what had happened in the 2000s. Yeah. Um, so I updated the research and we were stunned at what we, what we found. That the so, uh, proportion of startups in Silicon Valley founded by immigrants was 52%. Wow. The most innovative land in the world. I mean, you know, people watching this from abroad, uh, they won't understand how, uh, you know, like the ultimate, the mecca for entrepreneurs, Silicon Valley, yeah. is not even American. No. It's foreign. Yeah, of course. Right? I mean, people who can't make it anywhere else in the world, they come over here, and suddenly they're starting billion-dollar companies. They're conquering the world. They're, you know, they're impacting humanity by coming to Silicon Valley. Right? I think we've we've had more immigrants on the show than you know, as like you call it, locals. But it doesn't really mean anything, and yeah. and that's the beauty of it. Like it's kind of an even playing field, and anybody can do what they really set their mind to and, and then execute on and, and, and you can build uh, if you're an immigrant and you can build if you're exactly. a Exactly, and the people don't understand how open and diverse this place is. The fact that anyone from anyone can, can come over here, weird accents, weird ways of dressing, weird habits by local standards, and yet they're rock stars over here. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's the magic of Silicon Valley. That, that's what I've been documenting. Yeah. And then, then I've been looking at, um, um, uh, you know, a, so a startling uh, uh, reality that because of immigration policy, we're chasing these people away now. That all of the things I talked about are, are you know, a legacy. This happened because, like, when I came in 1980, it took me 18 months to get a green card. If I was coming here today, it would take me, you know, 10, 20, 30 years to get a green card. <laughs> and I, I would basically wasted the, the most uh, productive part of my life yeah. in, in this immigration limbo. Totally. That's what I've been documenting, and we just updated our research, uh, and we found that the proportion had dropped to 44%. Wow. It's not because immigrants are less productive or the, or the fewer of no, them. Definitely. It's because we, America won't let them start companies. So these are the battles I've been fighting, and um, you know I think it's making an impact. Yeah, and, you know um, we were at a summit a while back, and um, 
Brandon Kaplan from Skoll was talking about, you know, what's slowing down innovation. And I raised my hand and I said, the biggest thing slowing down innovation on the planet is the lack of H-1B visas and, you know, entrepreneurs being able to come here. It's not H-1B visas, it's green cards. Green cards. There are enough H-1B visas yeah, yeah. here, okay? Yeah. There are a million people on uh, temporary visas stuck in limbo. Mm -hmm. They can't start companies. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we didn't bring more people in, if we just sort of gave the people who are already here the opportunity to contribute to the American economy, you'd have a huge boom. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Kaufman Foundation just took the data results of my research and they, and they took data from the Census Bureau and they were stunned at what they, what they saw. That what, they, what they realized was that if we um, had a startup visa, you know, as is being proposed, even with all the weaknesses of the startup visa legislation, we would add 1.6% to U.S. GDP within 10 years. Holy. 1.6% for a country that's going, you know, the GDP, I mean, if you look at the, you know, e economic growth right now, it's pathetic, right? Yeah. Adding 1.6% to it is unbelievable. It, it, I don't know what that number is. but That's it, just by one thing called the startup visa. Wow. And so this, is, this is why America has become what it is, because it brings in people like us who start talking like Americans, being Americans, and contributing to this great, great country. And so you're actually on Capitol Hill taking this on. Like, oh, I, mean, yeah, I, I, I see you. Taking uh, senators <laughs> on. Yeah, and, and throw, right throw, on. Throwing punches. Yeah. I, I, it's so funny because, you know, again, you're involved in so many different things and now you've picked this, you know, really big battle. Now I'm taking Congress on. Taking it, taking Even on, on TechCrunch, I mean, uh, tech blog. I know. I mean, Louis Goodrez, okay, the, uh, the chair of the Hispanic uh, Committee of the Immigration, I mean, <laughs> in Congress, I mean, he and I are duking it out on TechCrunch. I, I, I swear. On I, my I turf. That. I saw, that, that's your turf, exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. So forget about me going to Capitol Hill. I brought Let them Capitol, come here. <laughs> Capitol Hill. Is a little <laughs> totally, totally. Right. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit. You know, this ties a little bit to you know Singularity, which uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, so now we're switching gears altogether. Yes, forget about all the problems of, of well, America. I, 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 now let's talk about the future of humanity. Exactly, right. and th that, that's um, obviously. You know, you know, I want to. I want to tell you a story sure. uh, about uh, Singularity. I mean. Um, and how a guy like me gets involved with it, because I was like everyone else in the world, you know, thinking, hey, we're running out of oil, we're running out of water, yeah. we're running out of energy, we're yeah. running out of food, mm -hmm. population is growing, therefore the world is doomed, we're going we're to starve to death, and you know, mankind is, is doomed, basically. Yeah. That's what a lot of people believe. Even Silicon Valley, you know, take Peter Thiel and, uh, and his cronies. <laughs> <laughs> I say that respectfully. <laughs> Um, I mean, they believe that innovation is dead. There are actually mm -hmm. academic papers which, you know, conclusively prove that mankind is run out of ideas. We're doomed. We're we're fucked, basically. It's, you know, if I could use the word on your show, we can use whatever. That, that's that's what these guys are saying. Okay. But so, you know, I was sort of getting pessimistic also until about two years ago. I got invited to uh, visit Singularity University. If you go into it 101, you see this mysterious. A uh, big white hangar there. You yeah. can't figure out what it was. It's mm -hmm. a, a big, big grain store. It's saying what it is. It's basically we used to launch, a, you know, the blimp from in the, yeah. uh, you know, early in this decade, early in the uh, in the last century. But you see this mysterious place, you know, this huge uh, land, uh, which is a NASA campus. I got invited there and I said, hey, this is really cool. I get to go and see what's behind, yep. you know, this uh, security uh, gate. I went there and I went to Singularity University class. I, I, I was only going there for an hour or two because I had a full day of meetings. I started sitting through the, the lectures. I heard Daniel Kraft oh, talking about Good the future fun, yeah. of medicine. And then uh, astronaut uh, Dan Barry talking about uh, robotics and AI and space. Yeah. And I literally, uh, well, um, on my iPhone, I started, I started sending a message to Canceling all people. Canceling your appointment? Saying, Sorry, I, mean, I, I can't be. I got a lot of people really pissed off at me because of it was a full day. Yeah. But I was so enchanted by Singularity, I spent my whole day there. And I walked out of there completely uh, you know, blown away saying, hey, this doesn't jive with what I'm hearing about innovation being dead and mankind being doomed. This is the exact opposite of what you're hearing. Yeah. So I started getting more and more involved and, and then I got to meet Peter Diamandis. It was like, Peter Diamandis, I mean, it was like, you know, uh, you, you, can you imagine meeting the founder of the Expires Foundation? Yeah. It was such a big deal for me to meet him. Totally. And then Ray Kurzweil, the first time I met him, I didn't even dare to go and speak out to, to shake his hands because so I said, this is Ray Kurzweil, I mean. Uh, you know, how will he even uh, know who I am? Ray and I were just exchanging four emails this morning. That's fine. Right, so I mean, Peter, Peter and I exchanged three emails, so these have become my, you know... Your my, cronies. <laughs> my, 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 my respected gurus. Yes. Right? So it's but the point is that Singularity University is all about advances in technology that will save humanity. If you go to the website, singularityu.org, or re-watch our videos, you will basically gain a different perspective of what's possible. And my, my, what I'm teaching entrepreneurs right now 
is um, forget about the past, look forward, forget about you know building silly social media apps and iPhone apps. You now are empowered to change the world. You can, you can now take these advances in technology and come up with world-changing advances that can change the world. I'm saying the same thing to women, saying, look, you know, fine, you got, the VCs here don't respect you, they don't, they treat you like dirt, screw them. I mean, I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, we can edit that out, I mean, <laughs> forget them. <laughs> no, oh totally. God, that, uh, that was, uh, I, I really didn't mean that. I mean, the, the idea was, f you know, forget them, don't yep. worry about venture capital, it's not important. It's not. Um, you can uh, s now start a company inexpensively, Oh my God, what a, what a stupid slip up that was. I mean, <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll take it right. Right, I right, know. Uh, what I'm telling women is that um, they're not dependent on venture capital anymore. Yeah. They can now fund companies themselves because the amount of investment required is very small. Yeah. So it's very easy to build world changing companies, right? I'm, the same thing I'm telling entrepreneurs in India, China, Mexico, Brazil, that they're not dependent on on venture capital anymore, they're not dependent on the U.S. leading the way. They can change the world right now. That's a that's a capability that um, is now possible because of advances in technology. Yep, amazing. So actually, part of the reason why I brought you here today, or asked you to come join us on the show, is because I also uh, met Peter uh, through Ken in L.A. on a Saturday morning, and he talked about this choice that you have as far as looking to the future, if it's good or bad, and, and all these positive things. And that kind of got me thinking about my little vision, right? And then you and I connected, and you actually invited me to Singularity, and I did the same thing. I came and hung out, and it literally it transformed you. I, it, it did transform because I felt like Johnny Five, and it was all this amazing input. Like every topic was amazing. Everything was like earth changing or world changing. Like uh, clay water filters b being built in, uh, in Nairobi or Kenya. Like uh, rooftop gardens, uh, and I mean these are all in vitro. Uh, uh uh, in vitro meat, yeah. vertical farms. It, it um, is insane. Like you know, new forms of energy. It, the stuff that you guys talk about. You know, again, I'm friends with Daniel as well. As well, who talks about you know the future of medicine. But it, it, it's like almost like a little bit of uh, like I thought. Is this like the Jetsons? Like are these people making this stuff up? But you know, there's so much stuff that you guys talk about and cover at Singularity. And people from all over the world come. I have met a few people in Dubai that have come, that are alumni. Um, and you know, uh, you guys, uh, to me, I think Singularity is kind of the future of education, at least around. It's not the future of education because our method of teaching is still primitive. That you have uh, lecturers in front of students. Okay, that's the old way of doing. Well, it. what I mean, uh, what I mean is not. But the, the what we're teaching is the future. The, fu of the future you're teaching, of the world. exactly. You're it's teaching the future. We're teaching people how to solve the problems of humanity and save, save mankind, essentially, is what we're teaching. We, we, we know, literally, when, when people come to our programs, we tell them that at the end of this 10-week uh, course, we want you to come up with ideas for, for companies that will impact a billion year people within 10 years. Yeah. Uh, nothing less than a billion, and if it takes, you know, if you can do it less than 10 years, great, but we want you to think big. Yeah. That's what we inspire them to, to do. So the 10-week course is kind of a, it's half building, half learning, is that, is that correct? It's half building, half learning, yeah. and, and uh, we have a who's, I mean, all the people you read about, I mean, uh, Dean Kamen, the guy who invented the Segway and the insulin pump, uh, Craig Venter, Vint Cerf, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the sort of, uh, those are the sort of people who, who are guest lecturers, who are urging uh, five Amazing list. Right. Guess. But then you also have a, um, a shorter program. One week exec executive. Executive. So, um, I've been wanting to uh, do the program. Uh, it's not cheap, so I, I want to tell people but, that. But, but you know, um, we actually, um, we lose money, we lose a couple of million dollars on the uh, graduate ten week graduate studies program, so we make money on the executive programs and it balances out. Okay, so that is not is not uh, it's not about money. It's about yeah, you know, changing the world. Of course. So, but, but what I want to say is that um, what I wanted to uh, propose to our audience, uh, based on you know, I don't know if you know, we're running an Indigo campaign along with this kind of curriculum that we've created. So this, these are lessons in a sense, and. At the end of the, uh, the curriculum, there's a test, uh, partially based on the content, partially kind of a personality aptitude test. Uh, and then the idea is that we want to sponsor 10 companies to come here. So one of the things we w I want to do for one of the companies or one of the entrepreneurs is actually sponsor them to come to the executive program to really take a dive into singularity and what you guys are doing. Because again, I, I would love to do it myself and, I, and I, I'm going to, I promised myself that. But it's just it's just such an amazing um, way of looking to, at the future and, and kind of looking at the problems and, and really exploring solutions. So I definitely uh, want to want to 
put that out there. So one of the companies, okay, I okay, well, why don't you go for two people like that? Two, okay. okay. And we'll and we'll uh, sponsor one. In awesome. Other words, oh my god, another that, so uh, awesome. This is subject to my checking with my boss. Yep. But um, um, Rob or Salim? Who, who? Rob, Rob, okay, is, Rob is the same. Rob's bad at replying the email, but I'll hunt him down and no, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. I, I mean, uh, you know, you know, you get one, uh, a few spots of one person. I'll get some guy to sponsor. That's awesome. We'll match you. Okay, so, so just to understand, right. this is a one-week executive program at Singularity, and I think it costs twelve. $12,000. $12,000. And we are going to sponsor a company, and Salim graciously has offered to Vivek. match our. Vivek, I'm sorry. Uh, all this, Salim, all I, these Indians are the same, these, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. No, you guys are super. Both are, are super cool. <laughs> right, right, uh, right. Uh, and you have a lot more hair than Salim. Uh, right, does, right. So, that's so, true. So, anyway. Both of them are better looking than the guy. <laughs> yeah. The beard? You know, as a matter of fact, you're right. I know. Anyway, uh, so Vivek, we have a, a part of the show that we call um, Lessons Through Stories. I don't know if you saw our board here. Um, basically, these are funny topics that I've come up with uh, that cover basically uh, parts of building a company. And people look at these like, oh, that's funny. But really, everything has a fundamental lesson behind it. So tell us one story about one of these topics. Uh, so, and I, and I want to put something out here. So another pivot, pivot is being covered a lot. Uh, chief janitor is being covered a lot. So dig really deep. I want to hear a vivid story that is just really really uh, interesting and, and hopefully you haven't told uh, to your audience or you know in public uh, to too many people. I, I can tell you lots of stories. I know, I know. I'll tell you um, um, the, the transformational piece of my, for part of my life was when um, I went from being a tech entrepreneur mm -hmm. to being um, an academic. Yeah. Right? You know I used to be like a lot of people you see over here obsessed with, with making money building companies, I wanted to give, get a billion dollars and so on. And so my second company, Relativity Technologies, um, the investment bankers were at one stage talking about valuing it at a billion dollars. And in those days, <laughs> the valuations were shooting through two or three billion dollars. I owned 40% of the company. <laughs> I would have been worth half a billion dollars, right? <laughs> so, um, and I was, you know, like everyone else is, obsessed with uh, getting there and so on. And to the point that I burnt myself out. I had a massive heart attack. No okay. way. What happened was the company got into trouble, I fixed it, and then I had a massive heart attack. Here I am sitting in critical care in the hospital when um, my investors, venture capitalists, call me up and say, Vivek, um, you've been uh, very devious about the way you negotiate evaluations with us. Because I, when the company got into trouble, I put my own money into it, I got my friends to put money into it, and I turned the company around. And um, they said, look, we need to renegotiate. And I'm sitting here, I'm in critical care, I didn't know I was dying. I mean, the, 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 the doctors were watching over me. And, um, and here's my VC telling me he wants to renegotiate valuations. I'm, it was like the twilight zone. And then um, uh, by what I found out from my, uh, my execs was that the VCs were trying to take control of the company yeah. because I was disabled, uh, dying, and this was the only healthy company in their portfolio. Needless to say, I, wa I survived, fortunately survived it. I walked out of the hospital. <laughs> I walked into a board meeting with, uh, the doctors weren't happy about my leaving, but with, Stuff strapped to me. I was all pale. I mean, I near death experience, double by the heart bypass. Wow. Right? The critical care. And, and into a board meeting with the VCs are trying to steal the company from me. I put, you know, literally put the phone on mute, listened to it, and I said, This fucking meeting is over. <laughs> um, um, you're fired. <laughs> Essentially, not exactly the same words. But, uh, you know, and, and then I took control of the company, fixed it, and I got sick of the tech world. And I said, I'm tired of this. Uh, you know, pursuit of money and obsession with, I mean, the fact that you would have the VCs striking, um, the, the, you know, because I used to be such a rock star in the entrepreneurship world. I yeah. mean, the VCs used to, we used to the board meetings in my house because uh, I was so respected and we were friends, okay? Yeah. So the moment things go bad, I mean, this is not, to be to their, you know, to their, uh, not to their credit, but to their explain defense. things to the defense. This was after the dot-com bubble had yeah, burst. Of course. Uh, the entire portfolio was in the toilet. <laughs> they had lost a, a shirt and everything. Mine was the only healthy company in the portfolio, so they saw it as a recover, way of recovering money for the rest of their investors and so on. It, but basically, it's, so, they, so they would rob uh, anyone just to, uh, uh, you know, t to pay back their, their investors. It doesn't make it right, but th this is what was driving, driving them. But the fact that they would strike me when I was down, they couldn't wait until I came out of the hospital to see if I lived or if I, lived, if I died before attacking me, right? So that was transformational for me. I said, you know, this is not worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this uh, 
money being obsessed to yeah. the world. I'm done with building tech companies. Um, uh, you know, I, I would happily have been, in a herm been a hermit and gone to the Himalayas if, if, you know, if, if I could have, because that's how sick I was of the world. And I literally checked out the tech world. For five or six years, no one ever heard of me. What were you doing? I basically um, uh, did a stint in Bollywood, I mean, <laughs> just, just to get away from the United States even, right? And then I came back and I joined Duke University in academia, mm -hmm. and I cut myself from the tech world. I was just with my students doing research, writing, and I, was in a, I, I basically became an academic. I built myself up in academia. You know, it's like you, you see these movies where people go off to a different land, now suddenly they, you know, you, they become uh, famous in the other land. I became famous in academia. I mean, I, cool. I started at Duke, then I had Harvard offering me a, a job and then a fellowship, and then Berkeley, mm -hmm. and then Stanford, and the Singularity, and then Emory. I mean, at, at one stage, I was at six universities at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he broke all records in academia. Right? Oh my God! <laughs> right, that's but, insane. But that was extreme. And then, I, then my wife wanted to move to Silicon Valley, so we moved over here, and I re-entered the tech world. So, uh, last three years, I've become pretty well known in the tech world. I'm, I get to be featured on shows like this, like uh, as if I'm important, right? Come on, uh, Vivek. Uh, look, uh, and again, I see you all the time talking about all kinds of different things. But uh, really, what what amazes me more than anything else is this: um, that you, I've always seen you giving and sharing and introducing and helping. And that's, you know... That's what I do. That's I mean, what I, you my, do. Exactly. You know, because when I was on my deathbed, the only regret I had was I hadn't done more good for the world. Mm. You know, you think about what happens when... Because, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know I was going to die. I mean, the, the doctors weren't sure if I'd, I would live or die, right? I was, just, I was just sitting in the hospital with my laptop, and I had all these horrible things strapped to me. And I, I, I didn't even know, you know what I had been through. It was, it was one of those things. But, I, you know, it did, did occur to me that uh, look at what happened here. I, I go from from being on top of the world, being a rock star, to now being dirt. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then fighting all these battles with venture capitalists and so on. Wow. And what occurred to me was, well, well, what's the one regret that I have? My one regret was I hadn't done enough for other people. That I hadn't done enough for the world. I was so busy making money, trying to build companies, that I hadn't given back to the world. So now. All I try to do is give back to the world. Uh, and how do I do it? I do it by sharing knowledge. But yeah. so what can I give? I can't give money. Uh, you know, I never made the millions. Okay? I'm, I'm comfortable, but I, I never got filthy rich because I wasn't. Uh, 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 and so I can't give money, but I can, I can share knowledge. I can share wisdom. I can uh, you know, be as helpful as I can and mentor things. So I try to do all I can. That's, that's what uh, you know, my goal is right now, to do all the good I can before I have my next heart attack. <laughs> that's not a knock on wood. I'm uh, just kidding. So like, I, I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, you know, you've been along with me in this journey somewhat. Um, you know, at first it was you know the fund and then an incubator, and so my uh, path in the last nine months has been similar. And what I realized was that I've made money in my life and I've wasted it, but I, it didn't make me happier. And what I truly, truly enjoy every moment, and sometimes it's 16, 17 hours a day when I'm traveling to the Middle East, is is meeting entrepreneurs, inspiring them, or helping them, or mentoring them. And the satisfaction that I've gotten in the last nine months and meeting almost 2,000 entrepreneurs in the Middle East has been more gratifying than any amount of money I've made in any business dealing. And I want to tell you that part of that uh, is you've been an inspiration to me. Uh, uh, you, a Singularity, you know, again, I, I just, I, I love the vision. I love what you guys are doing. I love every time I hear you, you talk, it's, it's interesting, it's knowledgeable, it, it, it inspires me. So you are an inspiration. Um, to me and I hope to a lot of people and we just want to as a community or even on a personal level, I want to thank you and um, Again, I, I can't write you a check, but I mean like um, what, what I'm saying is that you know in the big picture uh, you know to really simplify life, you know health, you know family and you know all these things that you know, especially in this country here. You know, it's very money-driven and uh, material things. Money is not it happiness. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. Helping others, giving back. Um, you know, really, that that makes you a lot happier. Yeah, I I, I commend you. Uh, again, I I wonder sometimes how you actually manage your schedule because again, I know you're all over My the place. My schedule gets crazy. I mean, it's it's hard. Yeah. Um, so one final thing we want to do in the show, uh, we call it old rules. Uh, so instead of it being new rules, we want to talk about what is the one rule that you live by, and maybe since your uh, moment, but uh, and then also what's the one rule that you like people to uh, follow when they deal with you? Uh, so no, it, for me, it's always giving more than you take. Okay, I try not to take anything from anyone, and when I do take something from someone, I have to give them back more than I've taken. 
That's a very simple rule. That's a uh, you know, like I, I, I have to, I, I ask myself, you know, because again, you give so much. Um, I, I really want to figure out one way, simply how I can help you. And I already figured no, it out. No, no but wait, wait, you know, I figured it out because the other day you said you wanted to launch a crowdfunding campaign to um, push out the book to, right. to get the book out, right? So. Um, I want to commit to you in helping that because again we, we're running our you're, campaign. You're a guy. I want women to contribute to this. Okay, we yeah, have well, we me, have we have Pamela on the team and, and, and you know yeah, she. Yeah, yeah, what we're going to see. Uh, there's a problem in Silicon Valley that women are left out. It's not in the, in the Silicon Valley. The problem in the world, yeah. even in the Middle East, mm -hmm. it's, it's worse than in Silicon Valley. Yeah. In India, it's worse than uh, Silicon Valley. All across the world, women somehow are left out. Mm -hmm. They are as smart as guys. In many ways, they're, they're better than guys are building businesses and so on, yet they're treated uh, like second-class human mm -hmm. beings. Wrong. We can't have that. So what we need to do is inspire and motivate them to change the world, to be, and, and they, can, they can do it. So this whole book is about the uh, challenges women face, the advantages they have, and how they can rise above it, and how they can transform the world. So rather than me write, this book is for women, it's not for me. Okay. Rather than writing it myself, I'm going to get women to write the book. Okay. So I'm still laying out the structure, it's going to be crowdsourced. So you can help me get the word out. Okay, and then what we want to help you with, and again, that's, I want to just make the connection. I want to help get it translated into Arabic. That'll be great. That's one of the things we have a, a partner in Dubai that we're working with, and you know we really want to start creating content in Arabic. We've talked to Steve Blank that's about wonderful. translating his book. So, you know, we want to help, we want to give back to you because again, uh, I don't know if you'll ever email me or call me and say, hey, Nima, can you help me with this? But again, I, I want to offer. To I want to offer. Let, yeah, because. Uh, um, Arabic women have the same advantages and disadvantages as uh, women here would do. If they do so. Let's teach them how they can take advantage of these technologies and how they can rise. And let's motivate them to change the world. Yeah, let's do it. Because I can tell you, they're educated, they're passionate. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, yeah. Vivek, thank I'm you so much. Look I look forward, forward to uh, obviously being in touch and. We can't wait to get. And I look uh, forward to eating your sweets. These, oh, look, these look great. The baklava is the best. Um, right. We have it shipped from Beirut with love. Oh my god! And this, by this the way, if you haven't been to Be Beirut uh, or Lebanon itself, it is one of the coolest places Beirut. on the planet. And so ArabNet, which is our partner, uh, we call it the tech crunch of the Middle East. Um, they are helping us distribute this content and helping us with the audience. But um, if you get a chance on one of these trips, I'm going next month uh, to launch this. But we would love to have you join us either in Dubai or in, in, in the Middle East and, and really engage the audience there. You know, my it. travel thing was crazy, man. I we know. We've been talking about this. Uh, last time we were talking about this, you were going to do a stopover on the way to India and, and it just, you know, logistically it's a nightmare. But again, thank you so much for coming and uh, taking the great. time. Enjoy them. <laughs> uh, I, you know, as a matter of fact, we want to, we have a, we have a box for you. So uh, uh -oh. would you hand me a box of... <laughs> Oh my God! Bah, bah, bah. Like this, two two pounds just over there. This, when I'm, this, I'm trying to lose weight. Look, <laughs> since the show started, I've gained five pounds. It's because I end up eating a lot of it. So yeah, please, really, please really take really this. Um, we have right. this, and then uh, also I don't know if this is the right size. But we have El a Baba, uh, El Baba Sweets Baklava. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about buying a franchise and, and, and opening it here. So. I, I endorse El Baba Sweets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I want to meet the, the founder and CEO of El Baba next time I'm in Beirut because right. we love, everybody loves your baklava, and I've heard from many people say that right. it's some of the best they've had. All right. Anyway, and we have a little t shirt for you. Uh, uh, my to, friend, to wear. You. Say hi to the guys, Singularity, Rob, Salim. Um, um, Sandy, uh, Robin, all, all the guys. Um, we look forward to hanging out with you one of these days again. Thanks again, Rivik. Thank you. Look forward to being in touch. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed our special guest, Vivek, today. Thanks to ArabNet and our sponsor, PayPal. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Good. Awesome. Oh,